Here's what I want to talk about today. 1989, August of 1989, I'm 27 years old. I just flew in from the San Francisco Bay Area to my new home, an apartment complex called The Springs in Bakersfield, California. I was going to be uh, starting my new um, teaching job at the university there. I was in the hot tub at the Springs. It was a beautiful uh, late afternoon. Uh, there were rain clouds and uh, possible thunder, but there I was in the hot tub. The weather was beautiful. It was like 88 degrees, humid. Love that kind of weather. Kind of like Florida, but it was uh, this sort of, I don't know what it was, some kind of tropical front. I'm in the hot tub. This older guy, he and his wife had also just moved down to the Springs apartment complex. I don't know this guy's name, but I know he was the plant operations manager uh, at the Frito-Lay plant in Bakersfield. I believe it was the biggest Frito-Lay plant in the country. And we were just talking about stuff, you know, how we were going to adjust to this small desert town coming from the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. He was coming from San Jose. I was coming from Oakland. And we got to talking about his uh, Frito-Lay products. And I was going, oh, yeah, those Doritos, man. That's what I'm talking about. Doritos, and we talked. We went down the line of all the Frito Lay chips products, and I remember, uh, uh, I, I I go to him. Uh, what about this thing called Funyuns? And his his body language completely changed. He uh, he looked around to make sure no one was looking when I said Funyuns, and he just went, "Don't eat those." And I want to tell you guys something. I've never eaten a Funyun since, not since 1989. There was something about his body language, there was something about his expertise, the fact that he had first-hand knowledge, it, that he knew something about those Funyuns and the way he, he secretly gave me this information, like we were uh, CIA agents meeting under the overpass of the 405 at 2 a.m., you know, delivering a secret envelope. It was like, uh, I, it, I was so impressed by that information. There's something about people who, who have an intimate knowledge of something, who have a very close knowledge of something, and then they make their decision based on that very close knowledge. I, as a human being, am very interested in that. And I want to now take that Frito-Lay story and apply it to technology. I want to apply it to the Internet. Uh, as many of you know, I, uh, I would consider myself someone who has a watch addiction. <clears throat> what I mean by that is... My fascination with watches is a hobby, and it's very fun, it's very compelling to me, but too often it crosses the line. I, I think I uh, probably spend too much money, more than I should, and I think um, a lot of my preoccupation with watches becomes toxic. Uh, and uh, I want to tell you, there are people who know a lot about the, uh, the Internet and its relationship to our behavior, and I want to apply it to my watch addiction now. I want to let you guys know something. The tech masters who work at Google, Microsoft, Apple, and other big places, the people who make software, screens, they, I want to let you guys know something. They don't let their children use computers. They don't let their children use iPads. They send their children to Waldorf schools, which cost between, uh, depending on the age of your child, Twenty-two to thirty-one thousand dollars a year. At these Waldorf schools, you don't have cell phones, you don't have computers, you don't have iPads. They know something. They know something about what the internet is doing to your brain. And they know so much that they don't let their kids use the stuff at home, and they don't let the kids use the stuff at school. And they know something. You want to know what they know? I know. I know what they know. I've been talking to people. You want me to tell you what they know? All right, I'll tell you. But the, the way I'm going to tell you this is I'm going to give you an analogy, all right? In the 1970s, when I was a kid, there were so many stories coming out about alien abductions, book after book of alien abductions, and they were all the same. You got kidnapped by these aliens. They put you on your spaceship. They, they uh, laid you down prone on a, uh, a table. And uh, they, they put you in this zombie-like state so that you were helpless. You couldn't do anything. They injected some kind of uh, drug into you that made you like a zombie. And then they probed your brain. And they probed some other things too, but for the most part, they probed your brain. Story after story after story about these alien abductions. Now, 
these abductions were complete BS, a complete canard. However, that story about the alien abduction is very important to us as we think about why the tech masters don't let their kids use computers. Because you don't need aliens to do to you what was done to those people in those alleged stories. Because we have something called the internet. The internet uh, is those aliens. The internet does put us in the zombie state. And it does probe our brains for, for consumer information and to stimulate our appetites. So let me tell you something. I'm a watch uh, addict, and wh what does all this have to do with my watch addiction? Uh, it has a lot to do with it. Do you really think my watch addiction would be as strong and virulent if I didn't have the Internet? Seriously? Imagine if I didn't have the Internet. I'd have to drive to the mall to, to go look at watches. To, to meet other watch uh, nerd obsessives, I would have to like meet with them on the first Friday of every month at a Starbucks. But with the internet, I can uh, get instant image stimulation. I can inflame my appetites by just clicking a mouse. I can buy stuff impulsively by just clicking a mouse. And I can get instant feedback from the watch obsessive community by posting uh, YouTube videos. Or, or posting on my blog. That's three things that inflame my passions. So in a way, the internet is that alien that takes us away, puts us in the zombie state, and uh, starts probing our brains. And the tech masters of this world, the people at Google, Apple, Microsoft, they know. They know exactly what it's doing to us. And they're not letting their kids get close to it because the internet is the funions of nutrition. And uh, does this mean I'm going off the internet? Does this mean I'm going off the grid? Am I going to become a rescue, uh, be part of a rescue team in Montana, kill bears and eat them? Sounds interesting. Probably not, but I will be using the internet uh, mindfully, I, I hope. I'd like to use it more mindfully. Uh, so uh, I got to go because there's some aliens who need to strap me down to a table and probe my brain while force feeding me Funyuns. Can you believe it? Holy Toledo. Until next time, I'm out.